time to address the elephant in the room. One quick disclaimer though, it's nice out and I want the window open and there's some guy across the street who's mowing his lawn. So if you hear an excessive amount of background noise, I'm sorry. With that being said though, this is a really big deal of a blaster because it's finally a successor to the Strife that I think the whole world deserved. Minus one point. Oh, but don't you worry, we'll address everything in this video. So with that said, let's start with the Elite 2.0 Storm Charge. One of the best blasters Nerf has made in a long time. Starting with the design, it's actually a little bit smaller than the Strife front to back, but bigger top to bottom, because they made up for the size lengthwise with verticality by putting a few things up here and a few things down there, and pretty much just trying to minimize the design as much as possible. And personally, I think they did a fantastic job. The Storm Charge looks amazing. It's covered in cool details like this curvy tiger cat like this curvy tiger camo that goes all over the whole shell and just like this aqua design on the grip, the foregrip being red, I mean the whole blaster being just like a mix of red and dark blue. And when you flip it over, they even have this cool looking design over where the flywheels are. As if that wasn't enough, they finally improved the jam door that they had on the Strife, even though it still works with the jam door open, which basically makes the jam door being a useless, but whatever. It's a jam door, and it's better than the one the Stripe has. Now for the fun part, the ergonomics. This grip is amazing. It's a little bit smaller than the Stripe's grip, and about 50 times better. I can't exactly put my finger on what exactly it is about this grip that makes it so, so good, but it just is. It feels like heaven to hold this. And I genuinely don't know why. It might just be because of how smooth it is, or the fact that these plastic kind of caps that they have on it remove any ridges on where your hand would be. So it's just the smoothest, comfiest experience to hold it. As if that wasn't enough, they finally, praise the Lord, added a foregrip, an actual foregrip, not just like a mock foregrip for you to kind of put your hand on that doubles as a rail. No, no dedicated foregrip. The blaster comes with a stock, and if you put the stock on and shoulder it, this foregrip works super well. It's super nice and comfortable, and it just feels great to hold on to, even though your thumb has literally nowhere to go, so I end up just putting it up, which you should never do on a real firearm, but this isn't a real firearm. It's a Nerf blister. With that said, I always try to apply real firearm principles to Nerf blasters just to be safe in case. They also give you a carry handle. I just really like that. That's just a cool feature. And if you hold it in pistol mode, that carry handle doubles as a sight that you can see through like the rapid strike had. It doesn't really work if you shoulder it because it's a little bit too low, but it's still there nonetheless. Now it's time for the part that everybody's been waiting for. How does this blaster work? First, you take a magazine. Then you rev the trigger. Well, you use the rev trigger. Then you have a semi-auto system with one of the best trigger pulls I've ever used. And then when you want to remove the magazine, you have a paddle mag release, which is also one of the best triggers I've ever used. Did I also mention that the rev trigger is one of my favorite rev triggers ever? Yeah, they really did it with the triggers this time. They didn't screw up any of them. That's a first! I don't think Nerf has ever not screwed up at least one of the triggers before. There's always at least one of the three that they get wrong. Not this time. They've fixed all three of them. All three triggers on this blaster are good and fun to use. That's a first. Genuinely a first. Did I also mention that the barrel and stock attachment points work flawlessly for a change? And that the little offset point where you put the batteries in is actually kind of mirrored on the other side with the extension of the shell? It's like someone competent actually made this design. Oh, but don't you worry, Supervisor got in there too. Ready? Do you see this? I did that. Because this blaster doesn't work with 18 magazine. How could this have possibly flown under the radar? It doesn't make any sense. They fixed this problem years ago. They introduced this problem again with one of their mainstream flagship blasters, and it really was a problem. It doesn't work with any magazine that has this nub on it. So I had to completely mutilate the smooth mag release and mag drop by filing the crap out of the internals right there, 
just for like this this one twentieth of an inch of space for the stupid nub that they put on magazines for some bizarre reason. The nub doesn't even need to be there. It's literally just empty space that they put on the mag for no reason. Introducing this problem and giving me a reason to complain. <sighs> I think we should get onto the firing demo now before I get mad about one of the best blasters Nerf has made in a long time. I, I have no comments. Let's just let's just do this. I still feel bad that there's no zombie target in here, but oh well. So the storm charge. Yes, the blaster is good. No, it doesn't work with 18 magazines. And I really wish Hasbro would stop introducing problems into their blasters for absolutely no reason, just to give people a reason to complain about them. It's so easy to avoid this problem. I, I don't need to talk about this again. The blaster itself, minus that one problem, is absolutely fantastic and I have no complaints with it. It's just like the Strife, but they genuinely improved everything. They improved the design, they improved the grip and the ergonomics, they improved the balance, putting the batteries even further to the back, increasing the balance above the grip and making it heavenly to hold as a pistol or as a main blaster, leaving less dead space at the front so it's even more balanced, giving it a foregrip, giving it better triggers. I mean, my goodness, they spoiled us with this thing. And I think it's fair to say I would give this blaster a 9 out of 10. It is one of the best things that Nerf has put out in a long time. They managed to take a design that everybody loved in the Strife and actually made it better. The obvious reason why it's not 10 out of 10 is because you end up having to fix this problem yourself after you buy it, which is super annoying and it takes forever to do that. But once that's out of the way, yeah, 10 out of 10. This blaster is amazing. So if you want to get one of these, I'll link it in the description below. Also, yes, I'm going to be introducing blank out of 10 ratings for blaster reviews from now on, which should be pretty interesting in the future. So yeah, I'll see y'all next time. Bye.